In this video, uh, we're going to take a look at the Asset Warp tool that's in Adobe Animate. I'm in Adobe Illustrator right now, and I have this character. And what I want to do is I'm going to put this character into, a, into an Animate and see what we can do with it. So here in Animate, I'm going to go to File, Import, Import to Stage. And because this is an Illustrator file, it's going to ask me how I want to import this. And typically what I would do is I would import this as a vector object. But since the Asset Warp tool doesn't work with uh, vector objects or doesn't work with movie clips um, or symbols, I have to import this as a bitmap. And when I do that, you can see that all these options become gray. I don't have option uh, access to this anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and click import. I get the object on the stage and I'm just going to go to the align panel and align to stage is set. So I'm going to align that to the center of the stage. So here's the basic operation of this tool. And um, you're going to see right away that it's cool, but it's kind of clunky. It's um, not really what you may have expected. This tool also uh, exists inside of Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Asset Warp tool. And then what I want to do is I want to create a structure within the character with armature and bones that will allow this, uh, um, this character to move. So I'm going to start here in the hip section and create uh, my first point, and this first point will be the reference point for the rest of the character. And you can see that it's created a mesh. And now when I move my cursor around, I can start creating the bones. So this first bone be the top of the leg to the knee, and then down to the ankle. And then I'm going to make one that goes to the foot. And that ends that sequence. I'm going to go back here, click on the first point, Create my next bone to the other leg, to the other knee, then to the ankle, and then to the foot. Going back again to the center point, I'm going to go ahead and click up here through the torso, up towards the neck. Create a linkage to the um, shoulder, and then to the upper arm, and down to the lower arm, and then for the hand. And we're going to do that same thing for the other side. So, and you notice that the mesh changes as we do this, as we add points. And then finally going back to this reference point and go up through the head to create a bone for the head. Now if you look over here in the properties panel, for each bone that is selected, um, the bone can either be hard, soft, or flexy. Now, hard bones means that uh, the shape is not going to change over time, and that may work for the bones that are inside the torso, let's say, this main bone right here, that should be hard. These top legs probably should be hard. Um, where it might change, you might have variability in the arms, um, the lower arms, so maybe change those to soft. And we'll see what this means later. If you really wanted flexibility, you'd use the flexi option. Uh, and then there are some other options here for freezing joints. Uh, we won't have to do that here, but if you freeze a joint, like for example, if I click on this and I choose to freeze it, what happens is that if I move anything else around, that joint stays frozen, it doesn't move. Okay, so maybe I want to go back and select that and unfreeze the joint. So the frozen joints, uh, you notice that the, it turned blue. The rest of the joints are this reddish color. And then you have the bones that are around this object. So what can we do with this? Well, we can manipulate and move any of these bones and push them into whatever positions that we want to. Uh, and then create an animation based on that. Unfortunately, we can't use standard animation. We can't use uh, a, cla a, a motion tween. We have to use classic tweens, which means that we have to create poses in different frames. And then with those poses, we have to create classic tweens in between them. So let's say I go down the timeline and I go to this frame, frame six. 
And if I use my keyboard shortcut to insert a keyframe, F6. Now let's say that I want to change the position. So I can grab the, um, the elbow here and move this around. And maybe I decide I want to move this and move this over here. And maybe I push this hand down a little bit. And you see how the mesh controls the way that the object changes. So maybe he's getting ready to punch someone or something like that. So you can kind of manipulate any of these shapes. If I want to, I can move the head. Uh, and all it's doing is it's deforming